Hey everyone, it's Zach with Palantir Research. The big news recently, having many Palantir investors curious to see how much revenue can be expected from Space Force's $900 million contract. That's because it's going to 18 vendors, with Palantir being one of them, and it's not easy to figure out with a little bit of digging and reading, I could actually come up with some models to estimate how much they could win. This video will go over their past contracts with Space Force to help estimate that, the different models to map out different revenue possibilities, and the feasibility of these different models. But as always, here's a warning, I'll need to make assumptions on many figures since there will be a mix of contract and other uncertainties are with my speculations. First, for those who haven't heard, note this is $900 million over five years under an IDIQ, or an indefinite deliver, indefinite quantity contract, which allows the government to more easily adjust the quantities of services because a large long-term project like this, their budget is probably more of a rough estimation and this is to help clear some red tape. The hope is that Palantir is an integral part of this project and hopefully gets large contract chunks while also being an ongoing partner for even longer than the five years. Now let me paint a picture today from looking at the history of their contracts and some specific dollar amounts from space that helped build out my assumptions and establish what we know. The first contract is $10 million. Want to note there are some other sources ranging up to $12.5 million but this is basically the ballpark. All from Space Force for one year in 2020, and this was for creating the Data Foundation for Space Command and Control Modernization with Foundry. This is to create a unified space force to ensure they get a complete picture when dealing with space-related data, which makes sense considering all the different technologies to collect data that affect the domain of space. Satellites, drones, weather patterns, everything you can think of. It also notes here the Space Force will use the company's Foundry suite to better understand what is orbiting Earth, be it satellites, space debris, or incoming hostile projectiles. So when it comes to establishing a foundational system to do that and respond responsibilities around that, it makes sense that this is going to fall on Space Force. Then we get our first expansion press release. This is on April 30th, 2021. This is for $32.5 million. This shows that Palantir will continue building and supporting the United States Space Force and United States Air Force by providing its software to the critical missions of the Department of the Air Force, Space and Missile System Center, Cross Mission, Ground, and Communications Enterprise. So these are SMC and ECX. And NORAD NORTHCOM at a firm fixed price award. In a nutshell, this sounds like Palantir sounds more collaborative with Space Force since they built up their data foundation already in the 2020 contract while serving the missions of the United States Air Force. Additionally, Palantir will support NORAD NORTHCOM's Joint All Domain Command and Control, or JDAC-2. This is for transforming, ingesting, and modeling high-scale data to support their comprehensive and collaborative operational planning and execution. Now, surprisingly, the second expansion now we see here was released in the fall later that same year in 2021. Palantir gets awarded a contract modification of $48.5 million, which means it's probably an addition to the first expansion because it later notes their total contracting stands at $91.5 million at this point. I'll specify later why this and another contract are important for figuring out my estimates. Now here's where I find my first gap. Released on June 2nd, 2022, we got our third expansion for $54 million. This part confused me because so far I've only got $91.5 million, but it's stated here that $121.5 million from 2021 one is bringing their contract value to 175.4 million. After searching for a couple hours, I gave up thinking this is buried somewhere under some joint contract or broken up into a bunch of little pieces. Sorry folks, but at least I have what I need to make some estimates. I'll go over the boring simple ones quickly first. So first averaging the $900 million contract out, that's around a massive $180 million per year to these 18 vendors. And first thought in my head is $10 million per vendor since it's so clean, but honestly that just wouldn't make sense, especially given Palantir's history with the Space Force and each player is going to contribute different levels of value. Especially during the negotiation process, I don't think Palantir could let that slide. And looking at the numbers, that is abysmal with only grabbing 5.5% of the total contract over its lifetime of 5 years at $50 million, even though they are literally the foundation. So let's be a little more realistic here. Remember those clues? The first expansion we saw in 2021 was related to deployment and maintenance. But intriguingly, the second expansion only refers to continuation. So the wording there must be intentional indicating to continue using the system. This might be the actual contractual amount to run this. So simply giving them the same amount each year at 48 and a half million over five years is already huge at 242 and a half million. And that's out of the 900 million, which is grabbing almost 27% of the contract value. And if we apply the same logic to the latest expansion, that also states that this is a continuation that's 54 million dollars a year. That would yield $270 million total at 30% of the whole contract. And it gets even better, so time to lay out the more interesting ones here. So just to lay out my assumptions, those two expansion contracts showed an 11.34% growth rate in between them from $48.5 million to $54 million. Playing with a few growth rate numbers first with 3%, they could potentially get $295 million at 32.81% of the contract. 
if we bump this to 5%, it actually jumps to $313 million for 34.81% of the $900 million contract. And if they somehow get close to that 11.34% rate of growth, maybe 10%, they could gobble up $362 million at 40% of the contract. Now, how realistic are these numbers? I don't know. This is all speculation. Like The government is known to be lumpy, so I wouldn't be surprised if they just bumped them up a few percent and kept at a fixed rate over the next five years. Or maybe the growth rate in payments will be negative as they get more upfront work completed earlier on and then just do less maintenance. Or even worse, we fall below even historical expansions because all the work will go towards hardware instead or new vendors. It really is a mystery to me what can actually happen until we get any more announcements, but check out my other videos too on artificial intelligence since I believe this is actually related. The potential of AI and space are the industries of the future and hopefully we are presently surprised. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe to Palantir Research for more content like this and I'll see you in the next video.